Hello and welcome to this edition of Face Palm History Edition Part 3. I tried to find some of the best instances in history that'll make you say, oh dear god, why? So without further ado, let's go. John Sedgwick, a general in the Union Army, was observing his men ducking down due to Confederate snipers. He laughed at them and told them, they couldn't hit an elephant at this distance. Standing up to taunt the snipers, and he got shot in the head. You know the long-range bombers in World War II? Well, they had a bit of a design flaw. Well, their lavatory technology was eh, rudimentary at best. Take the British Lancaster bomber. He had a makeshift chemical toilet sitting in the open, right in the middle of everyone. It constantly overflowed. If that wasn't bad enough, when you hit turbulence, the toilet got kind of, you know, messy. A lot of the times, pilots would come home with toilet paper behind their ears. Way to go, engineers. All right, how about King George II? His worst mistake wasn't just dumb, it was lethal. He got so constipated and exerted himself so hard that he actually had his heart physically burst. So hemorrhoids aren't the worst that can happen. James II of Scotland. He thought that a fiery cannonball display would dazzle his lady, so he decided to do that to impress her. He felt a little bit too invincible though, and he got a little bit too close to the cannon, which ended up blowing directly into his thigh. Needless to say, he died of blood loss. I don't know if this is a face palm or not, but the mummifications of ancient Egyptians. One of the greatest discoveries, Tutankhamun's tomb. The one thing that was left out of common knowledge was that when Harold Carter found the body, they didn't mention that the Boy King's mummy had a full-on mummified erection. Good job, embalmers. Ah, uh, General Ulysses S. Grant. He helped win the Civil War. Well, there's a lot of things you might not know about him. When he was in military school at West Point, he always failed miserably when it came to his school uniform. He constantly received demerits for his sloppy appearance. And later when he became president, he suffered numerous political scandals. Because guess what? He dressed like a complete idiot, not like a president. You would think that he would be able to afford, you know, to learn how to dress more stately. It was commonly thought that he was so unimpressive that he would go unnoticed in a crowd. The year is 1967. Small town in Ecuador. They're holding an election for the mayor. Well, a local foot powder company got a dumb idea, and they decided to advertise their foot powder on a leaflet that said, Vote for the foot powder. But it was the name of the foot powder. Well, people thought that that was actually a candidate, and it ended up being elected mayor. It would probably be a really bad dad joke if I said that it stood toe-to-toe -to -toe with other competitors. A soldier with the name Funk was trapped behind enemy lines in World War II. Him and his comrades were kneeling down in surrender while he faced growling mad German soldiers and they were grilling him to release information. Not knowing what the heck they were talking about, he just started to laugh uncontrollably. And soon, well, laughter is contagious. So the Germans join in on the fun. Once he had them thoroughly distracted, he whipped out his machine gun and literally cut the head German in half. The Germans eventually surrendered. When it was all over, Funk hooted. That was the f***ing stupidest thing I've ever seen. 63 BC. Political Rome was concerned about treason and conspiracy. One senator in particular, Cato. He was basically the boy scout of the bunch, calling out every evildoer far and wide. One time, he was on the senate floor with Julius Caesar, and Caesar received a letter. Well, Cato got suspicious. Caesar explained it was just a love letter and urged him to drop it. Well, zealous Cato pushed the matter further, accusing Caesar of conspiracy. 
but Caesar calmly tried to tell him it was nothing. Cato seized the letter and learned that Caesar was right. It was a love letter directly from Cato's sister. Awkward. It's 1995. Secret Service agents alerted Bill Clinton that his esteemed guest, Russian President Bort Yeltsin, was found in Pennsylvania Avenue holding a cab. But not just that. He was in his underwear, totally blacked out. When he was asked what he was doing, Yeltsin said he just wanted a pizza. One night in 1975, Gary Dole was drinking with his friends. He started complaining about the time and effort that it took taking care of pets. So he joked that Rox would be a perfect pet. Well, this isn't really a facepalm as much, but a stupid drunk idea turned into a big business. He found some smooth rocks from a beach in Mexico. Then he wrote a humorous 32-page owner manual titled, The Care and Training of Your Pet Rock. Well, he sold over 5 million pet rocks. So yeah, stupid drunk idea made him a millionaire. I'm not going to say people in the 17th century were stupid, but this is pretty crazy. Ghost impersonators occurred a lot in the 17th century. As a matter of fact, a grifter in a card sharp pretended to be a restless ghost. He wore a white sheet and was carrying around a bloody razor, waving it around and making the ooh sounds. And it worked. The terrified gambler stampeded out the door as he snatched their money and vanished. He also used the same ruse to rob an elderly gentleman. Then he made love to his wife. King Martin I of Aragon, who ruled between 13 to 1400, reportedly died after eating too much. Not because he ate too much, because when he retired to his chambers, he summoned a court gesture. Martin asked him for a joke, and here's the joke. In the next vineyard, your majesty, I saw a young deer hanging from his tail from a tree, as if someone was punishing him for stealing figs. Well, apparently that struck him as extremely funny. As many in that culture and time thought the deers hanging from their tail for a punishment of theft was considered super funny. Well, in his case, he laughed uncontrollably for three hours non-stop. And he finally fell out of his bed and hit the floor. And he was dead as a doornail. This proves that really stupid jokes can kill you. I'm surprised I'm not dead or haven't killed anyone yet. Ah, uh, critics. Philetus of Kos. Around 340 to 285 BC, an ancient source described him as an annoying, overly pedantic busybody. He couldn't stop himself. He constantly corrected others. He did play a key role in popularizing the Hellenistic school of poetry, which did flourish in Alexandria. Well, he got so caught up in correcting others, in investigating false arguments and poor word choices, that he starved to death while researching writings and essays. I don't think a lot of people of his time really missed him. If you want to be safe, don't make fun of your bodyguard. The head of the Praetorian Guards, who guarded Caligula, ended up murdering Caligula. Why? Because Caligula was a jerk. He thought it would be hilarious to make fun of him. He used derogatory daily passwords, which made fun of him, and joked about him being a homosexual. And whenever he kissed the Imperial Ring, Caligula made sure it was on his middle finger. Well, he finally got enough of it, and he eventually hatched a plot and hacked him to death. If you look him up, he was a horrible person. Toronto, Canada, 1854. Two doctors decide to perform a transfusion. Of blood, you might think? No, that's not right. Milk. They thought it was a booming success. If you disregard the fact that five out of six of them died, thank goodness it didn't last very long. Have you ever heard of the Wicked Bible? No, I don't mean the Satanic Bible. I'm talking about a Bible that was printed back in 1631. Originally meant to be a reprint of the King James Bible, it was infamous because they made a silly mistake which turned epic. The Ten Commandments. What was a mistake you might wonder? Well, instead of saying, Thou shalt not commit adultery, it omitted the not, which said, Thou shalt commit adultery. Well, because of that mistake, they were heavily disgraced, and they lost their publishing license. And all the Bibles that they printed, they were burned. The Union Army, right before a major battle in the Civil War. The Union Army camped at a site that the Confederate Army just camped at the night before. They found what appeared to be five cigarettes and a piece of paper. 
The Major opened the package, only discovered that the piece of paper was in fact a message, which detailed the major portion of the Confederates' plan of battle. Needless to say, they lost that battle. Ah yes, popular fads. You think stupidity's a new thing? Well, guess again. Before planking on stupid surfaces, taking selfies in dangerous locations, or the Tide Pod incident, back in the early 1920s, people thought it was a great idea to sit on top of poles, well over 100 foot tall, for 35 hours or more. Well, because of this fad, some really die-hard pole sitters decided it would be a good idea to sit on top of the neighborhood telephone poles, which, you guessed it, caused quite a few deaths. So stupidity is not a new thing. It is passed down from our ancestors. Thank you for joining me for this third edition. Yes, I said third edition. The first one was done actually quite a long time ago. I'll link it down in the description if you want to check it out. Hope you guys enjoyed. I'll see you guys again soon. And just remember, have fun with your failures. Or they'll have fun with you.